final three and a half minutes, trailing 20 to nothing against UNC Pembroke, the number three ranked team in the South Super Region with only one loss this season. Cade wants to throw down. Got Shontavious down there, makes the catch, and it's a touchdown for Shontavious Jones from 69 oh, yards out. Goodness. He's very, very confident, not cocky, but very confident. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch him, but you can tell that, by the way, his presence on the field right now, you can kind of tell. And off in the backfield, got it to Cedric, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, cuts inside, gets it in on his feet, 20, he's going to take it to touchdown for Cedric O'Neal. What a run. Holy cow, off the left side, he broke what, three or four tackles, and we've seen him do it all year, and that makes it 20 to 13 with 11.53 to go. The David Dean Show, your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach, Valdosta State's final regular season home game, dropping a, a, an exciting 34 to 29 loss to UNC Pembroke coach. And, uh, you know, watching the game and being there and looking at the highlights we just looked at and we'll get to in a moment. It just was a typical of, of this season almost. So close so many times and things happen and it doesn't happen. Yeah, you, you kind of get tired of these close, but uh, but don't get it done. And, and, you know, I was proud of our kids because we were down 20 to nothing at one time and never could quite catch them. And, and credit to them, they made some plays that kept us from, from tying the ball game up. But, you know, it was one of those games, again, we fought all the way to the end and you, you got to be proud of your guys and, and the way that they came out. Really, you know, playing for nothing, you know, just playing for a lot of pride. And they're having an opportunity to go to the playoffs, and, and you know we gave them everything they could handle. And coach, before we get uh, into the highlight, or take our break, and get to the highlights. I want to mention, be sure to mention, Chris Pope breaks Larry Dean's tackle record, who broke Jesse Tuggles' record. Uh, quite an accomplishment for him, a four-year starter for you at, at, at linebacker. Well, what a great kid! You know, we we were very proud to to be able to to sign him uh, right out of high school, out of Jackson High School, and then. Just the career that he's had has, has been terrific. And you're talking about breaking two guys' records that are both in the NFL. So hopefully he's going to have a chance to do that. But what a great kid. Really proud of him. But I'm more proud of what he said after the game. The, the record doesn't mean anything. Uh, the loss means more than anything else. Yeah. yeah, he is a great kid, which you have a bunch of those, by the way. And we'll talk about those mm -hmm. guys later on maybe. We'll be back uh, in just a moment with the first half highlights. Uh, my name is Jeremy Grable. I play outside linebacker from Alpharetta, Georgia. You're watching the David Dean Show. Welcome back to the David Deed Show. Coach, uh, final regular season Thursday night game. We were talking the longest football game I've ever been at, I think, with it being a TV game for some reason. Of course, there were 100 passes thrown in the game. That had a lot to do with it. Yeah, there was. It was a, it was a very slow game, and, uh, you know, it was a lot, of, a lot of penalties were thrown and then a lot of penalties that were waved off. So that meant, that meant a lot of discussion time amongst the uh, officials. So it, it made for a very long night. Let's go ahead and jump right into the highlights. Uh, Blazers. Uh, we'll get the kickoff, I believe. Pembroke won to Tulsa, deferred. Yeah, they deferred, gave us the football, and uh, you know, we came out. We started um, a couple of seniors uh, that uh, don't normally get an opportunity to start. Tyler Rose at wide receiver, and Trent McGuire at running back, and gave Trent a, a run the first play of the game. And good return here to start off with. Good, good block in there. Austin Scott takes it up, and then here's the first run here by Trent McGuire, six-year senior. Made a nice little run. We come back on the second play and get good positive yardage here with Cedric O'Neill. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't get a first down. We go uh, three plays and end up having to punt. Uh, they put together a nice little drive here to, to start off. and It was kind of the same deal that we've been facing all year long. They, we get them in situations of third down and they end up converting. We do a great job there in the red zone of not letting them convert here. And, they come in and, and are able to get the field goal. That was big for us to, to hold them there. Uh, we, we do a poor job on the kickoff. We don't field it. They, they squib one down there and we don't field it and then had a penalty on top of that. And don't get off the goal line. And then we were very fortunate here. Dom didn't get all of this one, but we got a great roll out of it. It hit way in front of their, they have a two returner system. And we were fortunate enough to get a, a big roll right there and then you know, it's, this is one of those deals where, where we got to have our defense step up. And gosh, you know, we just can't catch a break. That ball bounces up, and we got two guys around it and don't get it. 
Here's a third down conversion. They, they make the first down here. And you'll see here in just a second, they, they get down here. And big play right there by Kenny Murphy, but they get down here in the red zone and uh, they hit us with a long pass. And then just a great throw and catch right here, a back shoulder throw. Kenny, Kenny Moore is in perfect position there if they throw the ball on the inside. This is a great throw by the quarterback. So we end up going down 10. Here's a good throw here to Chris Anderson. I thought Chris played an outstanding football game. Chris is a sophomore for us and his first year starting. Played very well. Big hit there by Jeremy Grable. Oh, Jeremy played a, an outstanding football game in his, his last home game there at Aysmore Hyder Stadium. And again, they just they keep converting those third downs. We just can't get them off the field. And then the, again, another nice throw here. They cut in front of us and make the catch. And, you know, early in the second quarter, we're down 17 to nothing. We've got to respond now. We've got to make some plays. Here's a great, great job there converting on third down there to, to Chris Anderson. And then well, I thought Cedric O'Neill played another outstanding football game. As you see this game go, he just runs harder and harder. Uh, it's really good to see. We're really proud to have him and look forward to him for another two years and hopefully another outstanding football game next Saturday night. Good throw here to Reginald Lewis. Unfortunately, we don't make anything out of it. And here's another big third down conversion for him. We do hold him to a field goal. Our, our defense did an outstanding job once they got into the red zone. And, uh, you know, again, we're down 20 to nothing here. And you'll see that Caden Cochran is, is running on a bum ankle right there. He normally can break some of those tackles and get more yardage, but he just, he just can't cut very well. Good third down conversion here on the screen. The Tyree Waiters made a nice play. And then here was a big throw and catch here. Sean Tavis Jones made a great move there, got behind him. Good protection. Caden was able to step up in the pocket and, and throw a big, big touchdown catch there. And we were close to getting an interception there, just a, about two yards away from having the interception and then another bounce up in the air that we don't get it. Uh, they punt to us and we're gonna try to go down here and at least get a field goal out of it. Make some really nice throws here down as, as time is running out. There's less than a minute to go here. We're very fortunate there off of a tip ball. We, we do get a catch there by Tyree. And, End it and make a first down. Doing a good job here by Chris Anderson and getting out of bounds and preserving our timeouts. We had a couple of throws there in the end zone right before the half that, that we don't get. And one of them, Caden made a great play, got out of pocket and threw and overthrew Willie Downs just a little bit. And that was the play that he hurt his ankle, unfortunately, and we lost him for the rest of the game. You know, 20 to 7, that's a big touchdown, obviously, to, to at least, you know, keep us uh, in the ball game. And then the second half was just, uh, it was just, it was an exciting <laughs> second half to, to watch and call, but again, a frustrating ending to the game. And uh, the highlights are really, really outstanding in that second half. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I really thought when we got our, our own side kick there that we were going to be able to pull that off. But to their credit, they got a tremendous football team. They got a lot of seniors. They've been in that position before because they lost some games last year that kept them out of the playoffs. And the good thing about, uh, about what they have done is they learned from their mistakes and they didn't let that happen again. And it's a credit to UNC Pembroke. We'll be back with second half in just a moment. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and also by Colony Bank, the Houston Clinic, Sunset Farm Foods, Drury Inn and Suites, the Georgia Lottery, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. And Coach, uh, before we get into the highlights, they were 8 of 15 on third down conversions, 5 for 5 in the red zone. Uh, Blazers on third down, 9 of 20. And those are, I know you're not a big stats guy, but that's a pretty stat that you don't want to see. No, you don't. Uh, you know, we've got to be much better defensively on third down, get off the field. And then, you know, offensively, I think that a lot of those 11 that we missed were in the first half. We started converting much better in the second half and, and putting together uh, better drives, especially early in the game. We weren't moving the football against those guys, but they got an outstanding defense. There's a reason why they're not in one and, you know, in the top 10, 12 in the country. Uh, they got a good football team, good senior-laden senior football team, and I think they're going to make a lot of noise in the playoffs when it's all said and done. Let's go ahead and get into the second half. And you talk about their defense – 
six sacks, which is the most given up this year, I think, by the by your offensive line. Well, they're not a big offense, the big defensive line. They're they're extremely quick and fast. They play hard. They do a lot of twisting, which we knew that they were going to do coming in. But uh, they're a relentless crew, and they bring a lot of guys. You can see them rotating in and out and keeping a lot of guys fresh. And, and it really does help to have a lot of depth, especially at this level. Great play here by Lance Holder to start off the second half. We make a big play. And then we were very fortunate here. We got good hustle to the football. We stripped the ball right there. And uh, Lance Holder's able to jump on it before it goes out of bounds. And you know, this is the break that we needed early in the second half. We talked about it, making a big play. And then, well, I don't know if I've ever seen a better run than that one right there. That's just strong will to get in the end zone. And that's a guy that just wants to make a play. And all of a sudden, it's a football game again. You know, if we convert that one right before the half, you know, we got the lead. But we did a good job, again, stopping the run there early. Uh, we didn't do a very good job when they got in the red zone of stopping the run. But we did do a good job uh, in the middle of the field. Great play right there by Manny Evans. It's good to see him make that play. They do get down in here. And again, you can see a great play there by Lawrence Virgil. But this is just poor tackling on our part. We just missed too many tackles and let him get into the end zone. Good teams respond. They did. They're back up by 13 again. We see Caleb Nobles had to come in for us like we talked about uh, with Caden getting injured. I thought Caleb came in and played an outstanding football game, distributed the ball very well, managed our offense the way that we needed it done and, and got us back into the football game. Again, good kick again right here by Dom. They got two returners back there and we were trying to kick away from them a little bit and fortunate to get the ball down to the two and then a big play here by Hope and Grable getting the penetration, getting the safety, cutting into that lead. And then here's where we've got to get down there and, and, and score, and we don't do it. But again, this was probably the best kick of the night. This one turned over perfect. Hits right inside the six yard line and just dies there at the two. Great coverage by our guys. And again, we pin them down there again. We got to keep them down into this area. This is where we can, we can flip the field, get great field position, good pass rush in there forcing him to throw the ball away. And if we can just get off and make a play right there, we can get us a sack. But I'll take this right here. I'm glad to see Dominique get an interception. Second straight week, he's got an interception for a touchdown. And this was, could have been the difference in the game. If Manny catches that one, uh, we get two straight interceptions for a touchdown. And then unfortunately, the next play, they hit us on the screen pass. And we just, just don't make the play. We got people in position to make the tackle. And, we don't do it, let him get into the secondary. He's got good speed and he outruns us. And, boy, that was a big momentum changer for us. Because we had a lot of momentum on our side and that took a little bit of air out of us. But you can see we continue to fight. Again, another one of these kicks. He doesn't get everything on it, but a mistake on their part. It hits them and here's the break we need again. And uh, fortunately for us, they gave us that, that break. A good hustle by our guys to get down there and get on that, that football. But again, look at the runs here by Cedric O'Neill. Just he's dragging folks. And, and this is this is a good defense that uh, that he's going against. It's one of the top defenses in in the South region. And you can see right here, just drive you know, four or five yards afterwards, pushing people backwards. And then he lowers his shoulder right there. I like for him to lower that shoulder there when he gets into the secondary a little bit more. And then unfortunately here, we just, you know, this is one of those that last week it worked for us and I, I wish Caleb had handed that ball off. He didn't do it. You know, if he waits another second for that window to open, he's probably got a touchdown. They make a great play, ball tips straight up and they get the interception there. And unfortunately, we, we let some points get away from us right there, which could have made a difference later in the ball game as it turned out. Great hustle right there by Trocon Gay. Gets knocked down, gets back up, and gets back to the quarterback. They ended up having a, a uh, intentional grounding there. They convert on third down and continue a drive. And uh, you know, we, we again, we're still hustling to the football. We just can't stop them there on those third down plays. Here's late in the ball game. Good throw right there to Sean Tavius. He can't quite get away, but he gets us a first down. Great throw here again to, to Chris Anderson. You know, we're in a hurry up mode and look at this throw here. What a great throw in between two defenders and then another one of these back shoulder throws here to Reginald Lewis for a touchdown. And we missed a two point conversion 
And then here's the one we've got to have. And just a great play by there, Jeremy Grable, Charmaine Washington getting down in there, and Jake Walker makes a great kick, redeems himself from last week, and then unfortunately right here, we just, we know that they're going to drop that Mike linebacker back. They do it a bunch. We talked about it. He just didn't quite get enough on it and get it over that top of that linebacker, and they make the play there. Good football teams will do that, and credit to them. But again, really proud of our football team to fight back against a team that's 12 in the country, something like that, and have an opportunity to win. You know, Coach, we singled out Cedric, and, and what a great year he's had again. But Mike Helfer sat with me in the press box for a little while, and, and I said, Coach, he does things. You, you know, coaches take credit sometimes, but you don't teach what he does out there on the field, I don't think. You teach him, to, <laughs> but, but those runs he makes are fantastic. Well, you can actually mess him up <laughs> if you coach him too much. He's just got a lot of God-given ability. He's got a tremendous heart. He plays hard. He understands the game. and. Uh, you know, we're very, very fortunate to have him. He's going he's gonna to make a lot of noise over the next two years. All right, we'll be back with the Durian and Sweet School Board in just a moment. I'm Chris Pope. I play linebacker from Jackson, Georgia, and you're watching the David Dean Show. Welcome back to the Drury Inn and Sweet Scoreboard. And Coach, we're going to fly through these because we don't want to talk about them anyway, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to belabor it on this thing here. But uh, just a couple of big ones. Uh, Carson Newman, 52-31 to 31 over Newberry, which is a huge win for them. It is. Yeah, I think Newberry was uh, number one or two in the region, and, and Carson Newman was around seven, so that's probably going to jump them up and maybe flip-flop them and maybe knock Newberry out of the top six. And then uh, a big score for some of the – GSC teams, uh, Tuskegee loses to Miles 41 to 36. Well, Delta State and West Alabama, I'm sure, are very, very pleased about that, but also got to be a little bit nervous because now what does that do to Miles? They, they, if they bump Tuskegee down below six, they're going to have an earned access, so whoever's number six is going to get knocked out. And then uh, Lenore Ryan, uh, 62 to 24 of Team New. We didn't heard Anderson brought us out of West Virginia 62 to 24. Never heard of them. I, I, I think Lenore Ryan either plays Carson Newman or Newberry this week. So, uh, you know, somebody else is going to get another loss and get knocked out. And North Alabama wins easily as, over Florida Tech, as does West Alabama 63 to 17 over Shorter. So uh, they're all – somebody I think is going to have their feelings hurt, though, a, a week from uh, what, today? Yeah, we you know, we were trying to, to help out our Gulf South Conference teams and, uh, you know, especially Delta State. If, if we had beaten North Carolina Pembroke, that really helped Delta State out. And, uh, you know, we, we hate that we couldn't do that. But uh, it's in their hands now. they got to have an opportunity to win. And uh, I don't think North Carolina Pembroke's going to lose. They play a, a team out of Virginia that uh, is not a very good football team. So they're going to be in. Uh, and then probably two go uh, sack schools are going to be in, and maybe three, but uh, who knows? It's going to be very interesting yeah. to see those rankings come out this week. All right, Coach, we'll be back with the Georgia Farm Bureau. Look ahead in just a minute. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and also by Mediacom, First State Bank and Trust, Blanton and Griffin, Anheuser-Busch, Holiday Inn, Prince Automotive, and U.S. Education TV. Welcome back to the Georgia Farm Bureau. Look ahead and coach. Uh, we'll take a quick look. We're making our only airplane trip of the year, Texas A&M, uh, Kingsville. Yep. And uh, we're leaving Friday, which is good. Yeah, it is. We're going to leave Friday, and we're going to fly into Corpus Christi and stay there and then uh, bust down the next day. And unfortunately, we're playing a night game, so we'll be returning back to Valdosta pretty late. But... We're excited about it. You know, we want to we want to go over there and, and play Texas A&M Kingsville well. Not only to finish off the season uh, on a winning note, but the thing that we want to do is we want to go undefeated against the Lone Star Conference, and, and we have an opportunity to do that if we defeat Texas A&M Kingsville. You know, a lot of times the fun thing about these trips, you're going to have two or three players that never been on an airplane before, and it's it's it's, fun, it's not funny, but you know they're they're really really nervous. Some of those young guys when they get on that jet, it is you know it's very difficult for them be not ever flying, and they're a little bit nervous. So thank goodness they've got a day to get it out of their system. You know it's it's really tough when you're that nervous and you land, and then you have to turn around and play a football game. But uh, you know we try to calm them down, and our our players that have done it before really do a good job of uh, consoling those guys. So that'll be a, a game that's going to be an 8 o'clock kickoff uh, East our time here in Georgia. So we won't be flying out of town there until after, way after midnight. So Yeah, we're uh, looking at 3 or 4 in the morning before we return. If we get, a, get, we get the win, busing. yeah, we get the win, we don't care what time right. we get back. We've done it before. That's so exactly coach, right. Tough loss for us, and, but we can finish this season 6 and 4 and then 
Got, got a lot of work I know on your hands coming up here over the next few you and your coaches. Oh yeah, we'll we'll go back to work, but uh, we got one more. We're going to finish strong. We're going to send these seniors off the right way and, and hopefully bring a, a victory back here to the to Valdosta State. One more time. Thanks, Coach. Right. Appreciate it very much. Again, kickoff uh, next Saturday night at 8 o'clock, and you can listen to that game on the uh, Blazer Radio Network. Go to bstateblazers.com and, and tune in and, and see how the Blazers do next week over in Texas, our final game of the football season. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a great week.